Illicit drugs have influenced humanity for centuries. People have been fascinated by their powerful and addictive effects since they were first used thousands of years ago. Drugs have a strong grip, and many great politicians have been tempted by them. Get ready to uncover the shocking and often hidden tales of political figures who battled addiction while in the public eye. Stay tuned for the 10 Worst Drug Addicts in Political History. Number 10. Ann Richards In the world of politics, the spotlight can be especially harsh, and no one understood this better than Ann Richards. From the moment she announced her candidacy for governor of Texas, rumors about her alleged past drug use began to swirl. Her opponent, Mark Maddox, didn't hold back, accusing her of illegal drug use. Many of her closest friends and advisors urged her to confront these allegations head on, either by addressing them in her autobiography or through a powerful public statement. They suggested she might say something like, I was a drunk. I did a lot of things I'm ashamed of, but I've turned my life around and I'm proud of it. But as the pressure mounted, something inside Richards prevented her from taking this route. The allegations seemed to tap into Richards deepest fears that no matter how much she'd changed and improved her life since those alleged incidents, she'd forever be haunted by past mistakes. So she chose not to confess. In private conversations, she confided to friends, admitting that she might have been intoxicated during those years and might have been present at parties where illegal drugs were available. Still, she feared that if she admitted to one transgression, her opponents and the media would pounce, accusing her of more misdeeds until her campaign lay in ruins. The problem wasn't merely about possible drug use. It was also the perception of insincerity and a lack of control. Richards risked appearing as an incompetent imposter, a fear she'd harbored for a long time. Inside her campaign, the division deepened. While the drug allegations were on everyone's mind, her campaign strategist, Robert Squire, produced two commercials that seemed to highlight superficiality rather than addressing the issue at hand. As the primary elections dragged on, Ann Richards seemed to lose her motivation and enthusiasm for the political arena. One insider remarked, Anne discovered something in politics she didn't like. When she got bruised in the primary, she didn't understand what happened. She saw politics as entertainment, not as a contact sport. Number 9. Winston Churchill Winston Churchill, often celebrated as the indomitable leader during the dark days of World War II, had his own battles to contend with. While his struggles with alcohol are well-documented, there's a lesser-known chapter in his life that involved popping pills. Churchill's heavy drinking was no secret, but what many didn't realize was that he was also taking dangerous psychoactive drugs, including barbiturates. In the context of his time, these drugs were seen as somewhat routine treatments. However, when we look back, it becomes clear that the combination of these drugs and alcohol could have been perilous. His personal physician and confidant, Lord Moran, prescribed various drugs to Churchill, including a concoction known as Reds. These tablets were intended to counteract the fatigue caused by Churchill's relentless travel schedule and the immense stress of leading a nation at war. However, the contents of these pills particularly 100 milligrams of Secanal, are now considered too dangerous for general use, except in very specific circumstances. Churchill humorously referred to Moran as a purveyor of nostrums, a nod to his doctor's prescription habits. But the reality was more serious than Churchill's witticisms led on. The combination of alcohol and potent drugs posed significant risks to his health. Number 8. Rob Ford Rob Ford, a name that became synonymous with controversy during his tenure as the mayor of Toronto, was no stranger to substance abuse. His struggles with addiction came to the forefront during his four-year mayoral term, creating headlines and public outcry. Ford's admission was as blunt as it gets. You name it, I pretty well covered it. This stark acknowledgement highlighted the breadth of his substance use, encompassing both alcohol and drugs. The roots of Ford's addiction can be traced back to the early 2000s. 
it was a turbulent time for the future mayor. On April 15, 2006, Ford attended a Toronto Maple Leafs hockey game where he was seen intoxicated, using profanity and insulting people. This incident prompted a complaint to the city of Toronto, leading to media scrutiny and Ford's initial denial. He later conceded, acknowledging his personal problems, but admitting that it didn't justify his public behavior. However, the turning point in Ford's descent into addiction was the death of his father, Doug Ford Sr., in September 2006 due to cancer. This loss marked a period of transition for Ford as he began to rely not only on alcohol, but also on the deadly allure of crack cocaine. Reports even suggested that Ford's addiction reached a point where he frequented parties with convicted heroin dealers, further deepening his involvement with drugs. Reporter Robin Doolittle's investigations shed light on Ford's troubling nightly routines, which often included heavy drinking and the use of hard drugs or prescription pills. These habits were indicative of a man struggling with the grip of addiction. Despite the revelations and public condemnation, Rob Ford continued to serve as Toronto's mayor, defiant in the face of adversity. It wasn't until later that he made the courageous decision to enter drug rehab, acknowledging the severity of his substance use disorder. Sadly, Rob Ford's battle with addiction ultimately took a toll on his health. He withdrew his re-election bid for mayor in 2014 and passed away in 2016, leaving behind a complex legacy of political controversy and personal struggle. Number 7. Marion Barry Marion Barry, a prominent figure in Washington, D.C.'s political landscape, served four terms as the city's mayor. Despite his influential role, his career was marred by a tumultuous period in the early 1990s. In January 1990, Barry's life took a dramatic turn when he was caught in the crosshairs of an FBI sting operation. A videotape captured him smoking crack cocaine, leading to his arrest on drug charges. This shocking event thrust Barry into international notoriety and marked a significant low point in his career. Following his arrest, Barry faced a trial that ultimately prevented him from seeking re-election. He served six months in a federal prison, a stark fall from the heights of political power. However, it was during this period that he began his journey toward recovery. Remarkably, after his release, Marion Barry didn't fade into obscurity. In 1992, he was elected to the Council of the District of Columbia, signaling a remarkable political comeback. Two years later, in 1994, Barry was once again elected as mayor of Washington, D.C., serving from 1995 to 1999. Throughout his life, Barry demonstrated a genuine concern for the welfare of lower-income citizens. He championed numerous programs aimed at improving their lives, reflecting his commitment to social justice and equality. However, Marion Barry's personal struggles extended beyond substance abuse. He grappled with a series of extramarital affairs that became a part of his controversial legacy. Barry passed away in November 2014, leaving behind a complex legacy that combined political prowess, personal redemption, and public scrutiny. Number 6. Aaron Burr Aaron Burr, a major figure in American history, is often remembered for his infamous duel with Alexander Hamilton, which ended tragically with Hamilton's death. However, Burr's life took a complex turn marked not only by his political career, but also by a hidden battle with opium. For most of his life, Burr enjoyed a brilliant political career and held high political office, including the vice presidency. However, the fateful duel with Hamilton forever tarnished his reputation, leaving him marked as a controversial figure in American history. In 1808, Burr took a significant step in his life's journey by selling his New York home and relocating to Britain. In this foreign land, he embarked on a four-year period of reflection and documentation, maintaining an explicit diary. This diary not only shed light on his relationships with prostitutes and various illnesses, but also revealed a growing reliance on opium. During his stay with relatives in Britain, Burr increasingly turned to opium as a means of coping with his physical and emotional struggles. Interestingly, Britain was a nation where opium was more readily accepted during that era. 
The Scottish nobility, which embraced Burr, had connections to the opium trade, adding a certain irony to his dependence on the drug. Burr's diary entries provide a glimpse into his opium dependence. He described using opium to alleviate a toothache, saying, I thought of my old remedy, camphor and opium. In another entry, he mentioned turning to opium to combat sleeplessness, stating, Have had a most uncomfortable night, swallowed of the opium enough to sicken and stupefy me. His journals continued to document his use of opium to address various ailments, from headaches to the nausea induced by its consumption. Number 5. William Wilberforce William Wilberforce, one of the most important personalities in British history, is celebrated for his relentless efforts in eventually leading England to ban slavery. While this noble act defines his legacy, his personal life paints a more complex picture. Wilberforce, a devout man who credited prayer for his daily strength, also turned to a more controversial source of solace, pharmaceuticals, notably opium. Wilberforce's life was marked by a persistent struggle with severe stomach conditions. As a prominent member of parliament, he could not afford to let his health impede his vital work. Seeking relief, he turned to his physicians for a solution, and what they prescribed was opium, even though its highly addictive nature was recognized even in that era. Remarkably, the knowledge of opium's addictive potential did not deter Wilberforce from using the drug. Isaac Milner, a close friend, reassured others, saying, However, be not afraid of the habit of such medicine. The habit of growling guts is infinitely worse. Wilberforce's dependence on opium spanned a remarkable 45 years until his eventual passing. He maintained that the drug did not significantly affect his mind, claiming its impact was less than that of wine. Perhaps more astonishingly, he recommended opium to many of his friends, despite being aware of its perilous addictive nature. Number 4. Thomas Jefferson when we think of Thomas Jefferson, we envision a founding father, the author of the Declaration of Independence, and the third president of the United States. His illustrious career solidifies his status as one of history's greatest figures. However, beneath the grandeur of his public life, Jefferson harbored intriguing personal habits, one of which was his frequent use of laudanum, a tincture of opium. Jefferson's eccentricities extended his approach to self-medication. In 1803, he penned a letter to an acquaintance, candidly discussing an embarrassing and persistent diarrhea issue. In response, his friend recommended laudanum as a remedy. The exact moment when Jefferson first embraced opium remains a mystery, but once he did, he wholeheartedly embraced it. Opium became a regular part of his life, providing him with much-needed relief. The drug's efficacy in managing his health issues led Jefferson to maintain his opium use until his death in 1826. In a notable act of self-control, he refused opium on his deathbed, declaring to his doctor, No doctor, nothing more. He passed away with remarkable composure and clarity of mind. Intriguingly, Jefferson meticulously recorded the recipe for laudanum in one of his medicinal journals, ensuring a constant supply of the drug. He even grew white opium on his plantation at Monticello, perpetuating his access to this potent substance. Number 3. Mary Todd Lincoln Abraham Lincoln shines as one of the greatest presidents in American history. Beside him, his wife Mary Todd played the pivotal role of First Lady during a tumultuous era, the Civil War. Yet beneath the facade of grandeur and responsibility, Mary bore a heavy burden, one exacerbated by the strains of the times. Plagued by depression, anxiety, and painful migraines, Mary, like many of her contemporaries, turned to opium as a means of coping. To alleviate her suffering, she resorted to Paragoric, a potent opium-based remedy. Her excessive use of Paragoric was so notable that her maid, Mariah Vance, observed its effects, which rendered Mary violent and difficult to manage. Vance implored Mary to cease her opium consumption, but Mary responded with a defiant assertion. If Paragoric were poison, the Todd family would be dead years ago, some never born. We were raised on it. 
During the course of Mary's pregnancy, laudanum, which is also an opium-based solution, became a strong part of her life serving as both a remedy for her headaches and as a help during childbirth, which proved an arduous process for the young woman. Tragically, after the assassination of President Lincoln, Mary's opium use spiraled into dangerous territory. She oscillated between moments of lucidity and madness, concocting mixtures of various opium products. Her family, growing deeply concerned, attempted to have her committed, Yet even this drastic measure failed to curb her addiction. Witnesses attested to the shocking sight of Mary purchasing a bottle of laudanum, consuming it entirely on the street, and returning for yet another. Number 2. Meriwether Lewis Historical records indicate that few figures loom as large as Meriwether Lewis, celebrated for his pivotal role in the Lewis and Clark expedition one of the most significant explorations in the nation's history. Commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson to traverse the newly acquired Louisiana Territory, this arduous journey took Lewis and Clark to the untamed Pacific Northwest. Lewis, hailed as a pioneer and trailblazer, is now viewed through a different lens by some, who suggest that he grappled with a hidden demon, opium. In 1803, the same year Jefferson acquired the Louisiana Territory, opium pills emerged as a newly isolated pharmaceutical. Lewis, no stranger to its allure, seemingly brought a substantial supply of the drug along on his expedition. Astonishingly, Lewis estimated his daily opium consumption at a gram, a quantity that, when coupled with his alcoholism, would have unleashed a potent cocktail of substances. His routine involved ingesting three pills at night to secure sleep, and two more in the morning to navigate the rigors of the day. Lewis was also known to have used alcohol and tobacco on his expedition, especially during times of stress or boredom. Amidst his explorations and triumphs, Lewis wrestled with a relentless companion, depression. Opium and alcohol, while possibly providing a momentary solace, may have compounded his misery. Speculation abounds about the circumstances of his untimely death in 1809. Theories range from suicide to murder, shrouding the demise of this intrepid explorer in a cloud of uncertainty. Number 1. Benjamin Franklin When it comes to the pantheon of U.S. history, few figures shine as brightly as Benjamin Franklin. His brilliance as an inventor, statesman, scientist, and one of the founding fathers of the United States is undeniable. Yet amidst his myriad accomplishments, there lies a lesser-known facet of his life, one that casts a shadow on his illustrious legacy. Franklin, the man who helped shape the course of history, was also one of the first known victims of America's opioid epidemic. In his twilight years, Franklin grappled with pain, an unwelcome companion that seemed determined to mar his final chapters. Opioids, such as opium and its derivatives, were commonly prescribed to alleviate pain during this era, when the addictive nature of these drugs was not yet fully understood. It's within this historical context that Franklin's descent into opioid addiction must be examined. As he chronicled his life and times through his writings, Franklin made no efforts to conceal his struggles with substance use disorder, SUD. In fact, he seemed to view it as an unremarkable part of his existence. In the later stages of his life, plagued by various painful ailments, Franklin's physician prescribed laudanum, a potent opium tincture for pain relief. However, the relief provided by the laudanum was a double-edged sword. While it temporarily alleviated his suffering and allowed him to engage with his extensive circle of friends and associates, it ultimately hastened his decline. In a poignant letter written in 1790, Franklin bemoaned the effects of his laudanum use. He lamented the loss of his appetite and confessed, Little remains of me but a skeleton covered in skin. His once sharp mind became dulled and unfocused imperiling his efforts to complete his memoirs. In the twilight of his remarkable life, Franklin remained shackled by the grip of addiction. His dependence on laudanum persisted until the end, as he passed away later that year without ever breaking free from the chains of the drug. And there you have it, the 10 worst drug addicts in political history. 
If you found this video informative, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, let us know in the comments which political figure story surprised you the most. Thanks for watching.